Well, the cigar smoke was billowing, the Cartier shades came back out, and the Bengals can actually celebrate being AFC North champions for the first time ever, back-to-back AFC North champions for the first time in franchise history. Welcome into another post-game and a very special post-game edition to wrap up the regular season of the Strictly Stripes podcast. Muhammad Ahmad, Mike Nislik, Andrew Gillis back with you in Pickhorn Stadium. And uh, I think we need a nice long shower after tonight because that was a lot of smoke. I could still smell my jacket right now. Uh, do you, you guys ever been around that much smoke before? Cigars, cigarettes? Ever? Yeah. It, yeah. Uh, I went to college. I've, I've been around that much. Smoke uh, wait, so genuine question. Is, is OU a party school? Because that's your alma mater. Yes. Is it? Okay, well, I went to Kentucky, so I... I don't know how much it compares to you, but uh, yeah, I, I've never been around that much. I, like I said, I was in college too, but man, I was a lot of smoke. But I mean, that just speaks for how happy and excited those guys were, you know, to go from being 0-2 to that 4-4 four and four start after losing to Cleveland and not losing a single game since then and having everything that happened this week with the DeMar Hamlin situation and the coin toss, the Bengals couldn't have ended the season any better. And they play the Ravens again next week back here in Cincinnati again. And Andrew, I just want to jump to you because, I mean, you covered this team. For those who don't know already, I like to call him the Ravens insider. Uh, We saw today, it was obviously weird because you didn't have Lamar Jackson, didn't have Tyler Huntley. A lot of other starters like Marcus Peters and et cetera, like J.K. Dobbins were inactive. But the Bengals had kind of a wonky second half, uh, offensively speaking at least. Uh, What do you take away from that and what changes if, you do have Lamar Jackson back on the field next week. Yeah, um, this is a very weird game. You know, typically at the end of a regular season, you know, right when you get into the playoffs, unless it's kind of a winner, winner, you know, winner go home situation, you, you, you really just kind of flush these wins uh, or losses, whatever they are. Uh, and I think you kind of do the same thing today. Um, Joe Burrow didn't look great. Uh, you know, he underthrew a deep shot to Jamar Chase early. Overthrew a deep shot to T. Higgins later, had a couple misses. Now, granted, on that one T. Higgins drive, he did throw a touchdown to Jamar. But um, the, the Bengals just, they came out firing. They were up 17 nothing, and I don't think they looked as good as they had in the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, they didn't look great. But again, I'm, you're talking about a Ravens team that was starting Anthony Brown, who threw 44 passes today, 39 more than he had ever thrown in his career yeah. before today. So. The Ravens next week are going to have a new starting quarterback. They're going to have a new starting running back. They're going to have a new leading receiver. The Ravens are going to look a lot different next week, whenever that is, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Mm -hmm. than what we saw today. So I think you kind of just flush this one. I don't know how much you can really take from it other than the fact Bengals got to clean up some errors, but I don't think they were necessarily Ravens and Ravens forced errors. I think the Bengals just kind of shot themselves in the foot a few times. Would you agree with that, Mike? In what sense? Did they just kind of shot themselves in the foot? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. I mean, I do think there is some concern there because it wasn't just the first time. Uh, they seem to have lacked a killer instinct the last couple of weeks. Um, obviously, mm-hmm. not talking about the Bills game, going back to the Patriots where they were one touchdown away um, from. Really ending the game, it felt like uh, I was in uh, New England, and you know the fans were sort of all over the place, really frustrated with their that team, and the Bengals sort of you know <laughs> just didn't finish it out. And then this this time they didn't do it, and it was costly because you know Alex Karras goes down with the injury. Uh, we don't know his status; doesn't look good. He was on a scooter in the uh, post game locker room, and uh, you know he probably shouldn't have been on the field in that second half. They, I, I felt like the Ravens wanted to give this game away. Um, and it kind of played right into their hands that uh, the Bengals just had to kind of keep keep their starters in there for much longer than they um, should have, and that ultimately was costly because that's what yep. Harris, you know, think about the last seven minutes of this game, um, you know, Joe Burrow shouldn't have been anywhere near this field. And no. A lot of those offensive uh, linemen, you know, Teagan's got shaken up, and that was kind of a scary moment. Just um, you know, He's a guy that's dealt with a couple injuries this year, so I think it was costly, and I do think there is some concern that um, – you know, they were playing for a lot in this game, so they had the motivation there. Uh, but they did feel like they took the you know pedal off the gas, um, and maybe that was the level of competition they were facing. But you know, same thing against New England, and, and you can only make you know those things will catch up with you. So I, I do think you know Zach Taylor didn't sound thrilled with kind of 
how they played in the second half. Yeah. Denver didn't either. Well, the thing about it too, he didn't just seem like I agree he wasn't thrilled about performance, but. It was a much different tone from Zach Taylor than last year when, you know, he was very emotional. He choked up at the podium because of all that they'd been through since his first season when they had the worst record in the league. Didn't seem like that today. It just seemed like he treated it like another game and, you know, he just kind of came and went. You know, I'd imagine it was just a long week for him, of course, with the DeMar Hamlin situation. And, and there's more celebration to come with that given, you know, he watched the Bill game today. Hamlin did, and he's doing much better. Uh, he's been progressing throughout the week, but... You know, I think the the frustration of the coin toss, the implications we talked about in our preview Friday, I think there was still kind of that frustration there. So it looked like more than anything, he was just kind of glad to just get this over with and now focus on playing the Ravens again. Because like you said, it's going to be tougher. They're going to have a different quarterback, different running back. They could have other players back like Marcus Peters for all we know. Um, I'd have to look at kind of their injuries again, but they'll have more players back than today. Yeah, I mean, I would be stunned if, if those guys don't play. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you look at the injury report... This week for the for the Ravens, Clay's Campbell was questionable. He yeah. played, but then Huntley didn't play. They cut Deshaun Jackson. Marcus Peters was questionable with a calf. Uh, Brandon Stevens was questionable with an illness. They sat those guys. Yeah. Mark Andrews, J.K. Dobbins were not on the injury report. They sat them. Kevin Zeitler, yeah. their guards, former Bengal. They're, they're gonna have a lot of guys that are that were not on the field today. They're gonna get some significant reinforcements next week. And to kind of go back to what Mike said, you know. Playing that long was costly to a sense because, you know, Tyler Boyd had to be evaluated uh, for a concussion. He ended up coming back to the game and finishing it out. Uh, T. Higgins kind of had to walk out for a second because he got the air knocked out of him when he got hit at midfield. But the biggest hit, of course, is Alex Kappa in the second half. Kind of got his, I think it was his left leg, got his rolled out. left ankle, up. They, they ruled yeah. out. Yeah, he was ruled out, and we don't know the status on that. You know, he could be out next week. That means Max Sharping would, would be right behind him. Uh, he played a little bit in the New England game when Lyle Collins went out, but that's the thing. You don't have Lyle Collins. You might not have Alex Kappa. And I think the two sacks that Burrow sustained in the game, at least one of them, that came from that right side. And it was Justin Houston and Adolphe Owe getting to him. So that, I think that's a pretty big concern. If you don't have Alex Kappa and you for sure don't have Lyle Collins for the rest of the year, uh, how much of a problem is that you think the Bengals should worry about next week and beyond the playoffs? Oh, that's a huge issue. Yeah. Um, that's a massive, massive issue. Um, you know, you can kind of get the sense talking to the guys in the locker room that this is not a high ankle sprain. Yeah. Um, you know, Ted Karras, he he said, I think he called uh, Alex Kappa his confidant. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, he, he had a quote later, too, where he said, you know, I've gotten a lot of credit this season, and 60% of that is owed to, to Alex Kappa. Um, you know, I asked Cordell Volson that specifically about about Alex, and you know, Cordell needed like two or three seconds to kind of collect his thoughts and, and kind of think about what he was going to say. And, and you could tell that really kind of hurt him um, and, and those offensive linemen that were kind of in that room there. So the the capital loss is big, Huge. I, I think, paired with you know for for what it for what it is, you're losing a veteran right guard who's played well all year and who the guys all really you know they really really like and they really really trust, um, but. That's paired with Lael Collins. Um, you know, you play on Christmas Eve and you lose Collins. And then last week technically was, was no game. Right. Um, and then you have today happen where you lose Kappa. So you're going to be going into a playoff game against the Ravens with a right side of your offensive line that Hakeem Adeniji played, what, like a half against the Patriots, and then he played a full game today. Got a holding and you're penalty. And you're going to have a new right guard next week. Like, you're, you're, this is a bad time of year to be kind of rebuilding a part, of your, a part of your roster and a part of your lineup, and that's what the Bengals have to do. Well, and the only reason the Ravens were in the game in the first place was because that defensive front was playing so well. Yeah. Um, Joe Burrow kind of uh, made sure that they didn't do as much damage by scrambling uh, a couple times in the first half and preventing some, some losses, but... He didn't have a very clean pocket today. No. I mean, obviously, he won't throw that, you know, he throw them under the bus, but I think that was kind of part of the, the problem. And then it was worse kind of in the second half. Obviously, when Campbell went down, things kind of went haywire. But, um, yeah, it's not to, to have a new right side of the offensive line, which is, I think, the, the one of the reasons they were uh, in this place, that eight-game win streak, was because of the improvement of that front. Yeah. Um, I think is a real tough um, spot for them. Yeah, and like you said, it's now it's going to be, if you don't have Alex Kappa next week and beyond, it's Max Sharping, who only played against the Patriots when, you know, Collins went down. And then <laughs> you have Jackson Carmen, who, I mean, the, the one thing that stood about him today was he just about got into it with the Ravens sideline. And I think people already know he's 
not on the best terms with Frank Pollock and most of the coaching staff. So uh, he definitely did not help his case there. Um, but again, I mean, even beyond that, he just didn't really look all that. And that's why he's been mostly inactive this year. I think that was the first game he even played. He's been inactive just about all year because he didn't really uh, shine in training camp. So you, you have to do your best with with those two, you also have Deontay Smith as depth, but even then, he's been pretty much inactive all year up until the last couple games. So that's going to be uh, something to watch, especially with, like you said, that front that the Ravens have. Uh, they're definitely going to go after that. Like that's going to be a huge part of the game plan. Is just you know attack the right side and you know get after Burrow because, like you said, you know that first drive, like he was backyard Burrow. There was that one play where you guys remember he made like three people miss for a sack, and he just you know gets like five or six yards close to a first down and then second half it's like yeah he could sack a couple times didn't look as comfortable um didn't convert that fourth down and again that's it's not on uh the ravens i think they just kind of shot themselves in the foot like andrew mentioned so that's going to be something to watch but on the positive side you know one thing i just realized is you know you have hayden hurst back for the first time since technically that buffalo game that didn't count but he was back he missed you know three games with that calf injury you had him higgins chase boyd i mean I know, like I said, Higgins and Boyd kind of had to go out for a little bit with their respective hits. But, I mean, collectively together, how nice was it to see them back together as a whole unit again? Like, you know, did that kind of shine? Did that kind of stick out to you guys today? No. No? <laughs> no? No, I, I, I mean, I, you know, they uh, they stumbled, I thought, offensively. I mean, I don't, I don't think they played very well. I think they were unhappy with how they played. Um you know, against a defense with a cornerback that just walked off the injured reserve that hadn't played uh, pretty much all season. Um, you know, I, I think they have to be very disappointed with kind of um, not executing and leading, leading point on the board. What was their final eight drives? They only had three first downs or something like that. They didn't score seven of their last eight drives, yeah. So, I mean, it's like uh, I, I don't think they're going to take any solace in that the fact that they had everybody available sort of makes it worse that they should have they, – they had – Huge advantage in this game that they didn't take advantage of, and you know they'll they'll flush it because, like Andrew said, it doesn't really matter. I guess in the sense that I mean now you're in the playoffs, you got your home field, but um, troubling in some senses just because you know I, I think people forget the last game that they did play was that Patriots game, and um, you know they've got sort of going even back to Tampa Bay where. They've played some pretty bad halves of football to maintain that. I mean, you know, they've won eight overall in a row, which is obviously very good, but um, some spotty moments here in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, the I mean, early on, I mean, we kind of thought that this was going to be like a butt whipping. Like, Bengals get the, I mean, they get a field goal on a 17 play drive. They get the ball on an interception, touchdown. They get the ball on an interception, touchdown. The game's 17 nothing. And I, I mean, you kind of just think at that point, like, okay, the Ravens have folded, this game's over. And from those first three drives where, you know, the Bengals, um, and obviously they had a defensive touchdown in here, from that point, which, you know, the, um, it ended with, let's see, 14-12 left in the second quarter, here were their drives and how they ended the rest of the game. Punt, 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 fumble, field goal, punt, yeah. punt, downs, punt, punt. Like, that's not good. The last five, what is this, last five drives here, the plays. Three, three, four, three, three. You're going three and out. You're going four and out. You can't do that in the playoffs. Um, I, I will say, I mean, the Ravens' defense is uh, is talented. Um, so I guess the, the silver lining to this is, you know, you saw pretty much what they're going to look like next week. Um, they're obviously going to have Marcus Peters, you would assume. Um, but, I mean, outside of that, like, T. Higgins, what do you have? One catch for like eight yards or something today? Like T. I, Joe Burrow. He, I mean, granted, Joe Burrow missed T. on a deep shot. Uh, he underthrew Jamar on a deep yeah, shot. They had their chances. For seven yards. One catches for seven yards. I was too nice to him. Um, they like they ran the ball for two and a half yards a carry from Mixon. Like they, they didn't play. Well that actually is. I did notice. Yeah, Mixon only had like what two point five yards point, per yeah, carry. I mean, eleven carries, but still, that's not they good. They didn't run the ball effectively today. And yeah, like, that's another problem. They haven't been a running team all year. Yeah, that, that's fine. Like they're not going to win games in the playoffs by you know pounding out six yards a carry. Like that's what the Ravens are going to try to do next week when when everybody's kind of back, whether it's Huntley or Lamar, but. You have to be able to do one or the other, and today they didn't really do one super well. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the numbers, so yeah, Higgins did have one catch. I had it mixed up with uh, Tyler Boyd because I know Tyler Boyd went out. But no, Boyd actually did fine. Five catches, 51 yards. 
Jamar Chase, I mean, he had a great game. Eight catches, 86 yards, a touchdown. He's should mention over a thousand yards for the second straight season, and guess what? Just two years. Um, Hayden Hurst, I will say this, stats wise, didn't have the best numbers, but had two really huge third down catches on that first drive. Which I will admit, overall as a unit, I get what you guys are saying. It wasn't the best, but I don't think it was the worst because again, Chase had a great game. Boyd did what he could until he, you know, had to miss some plays because of that hit. Mixon, hey, five catches, forty-one yards. He had that one thirty-three yard run. You know, that's the one thing he's been good with is, you know, yeah, he hasn't been great with running the ball because they haven't really run much, like you said, Andrew. But uh, when they kind of throw it to him in the flat, it's uh, kind of hit or miss. But today he, he kind of hit it. But there was one great thing, uh, Mike, I don't want to forget about that you mentioned. You said that you kind of go back to the Patriots game. You can even go back to the Tampa Bay game. And I wrote about this a little bit, but you said the words killer instinct. You know, that, yeah, the second half, there really wasn't that. And in those certain halves of those games, definitely wasn't much of a killer instinct. How much of that do you think changes next week? And if not, I mean, how, how concerned are you that they're not going to have enough of that, you know, like you said, killer instinct to where they, they could possibly get shocked by the Ravens next week? Well, I mean, I don't know if it would be shocking if Lamar comes out and starts, even though I'd, I would be surprised if he did and yeah. they win that game. Um, you know, Anthony Brown is, is back. I, I think he would. But, yeah. um, you know, I, I just think it's something to be mindful of as this team goes forward. Um, you know, they... Uh, they haven't played a full game in, in a while, and yeah. um, you know against better competition. Um, you know if you're looking at the schedule and you have the Bills coming up, you know Kansas City might have been the last game where they kind of played that full game. Um, does the competition matter that much? Um, it shouldn't, uh, you know, but maybe it will. Maybe that provides them sort of the focus they need to uh, play better for you know the, the full 60 minutes. Um, but you're not going to be able to take any time off against some of those teams. Um, you know, here in the next three weeks, if you want to uh, make it back to the Super Bowl, and, and I think they know that, um, and and so it'll be interesting to watch to see how the how this team kind of the playoff run unfolds. You yeah. know, and sorry, go ahead, Andrew. No, I, I was going to say, um, you know, Mike mentioned um, Anthony Brown and Lamar. Um, I haven't. I'm pulling up my you know sports books now, so I haven't seen it, but. Uh, Jay Morrison of The Athletic tweeted the contingency opening lines for next week. Uh, if Lamar starts, Bengals by five and a half. Wow. If Huntley starts, Bengals by eight and a half. If Anthony Brown starts, Bengals by ten. But they're a favorite in each game. They're they're a fa- each yeah, each they're, scenario, they're I mean. Yeah, they're going to be the favorite no matter what. Um, but yeah, like a five-point underdog coming into Paycor Stadium and winning is not shocking. Um, yeah. I, I mean, like I wouldn't be stunned by that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, th- there would be, it, I mean, there would be a lot of questions about how and why and, you know, what kind of things went wrong that allowed that to happen. But, yeah, I, I mean, like, the the Bengals did not, like, luck out here by playing some team that, you know, has a terrible offense or whatever. Like, the Bengals, they're in for a fight next week. And Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's going to be really, really interesting. Well, you know, like Joe Burrow said, they like the hard path, and that's really what it's been. And um, before I kind of touch on that, I want to kind of ask you this because I don't want to slip my mind, but, you know, you covered the Ravens for a couple years before you came to Cincinnati this year. You were there for that 14-2 and two year when Lamar was MVP. I mean, for you, like, I just have to ask, how weird is it that you're going to be covering them you're going to be covering the Bengals next week against the team that you covered uh, for so long. Like, is it kind of weird, not just today, but like in the playoffs especially? Like, no, what's that like? No, um, I, you know, I think we talked about this in October. Like, I kind of joked. I, I don't think I've I, – I didn't really have to do as much research as I do for, for the Ravens because I just, <laughs> you know, I know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, after a while, it's the same. Um, you know, the the thing that I am I, – I like, I do want to say about the Ravens, though, like – the Ravens have, you know, a lot of playoff experience, um, and I think that that matters. You have a really veteran head coach. Um, you know, you mentioned that 14-2 and two year, but Lamar played in the playoffs in 18, played in the playoffs in 19, played in the playoffs in 20. Um, last year he was injured and they missed the playoffs. So, like, the Ravens are not, you know, new to this whole playoff thing. Um, you know, the, the Bengals are not either. They went to the Super Bowl, obviously, last year, but – like, this is going to be – I'm really, really fascinated to see how this kind of game unfolds because if you do get a quarterback that comes back after a month, what does he look like? Oh, yeah, I mean, that's there, absolutely – There's so much to get into this week. Um, but I'm, I'm – you know, it's going to be um, – it's going to be interesting because, again, like you mentioned, 
the Ravens have kind of been there and done that. I've watched it with my own eyes. So it's, yeah. um, they're, they're a veteran team, and it's going to be um, – it's going to be fun. So to kind of expand away from just this game and this season, you know, you think about this, like I mentioned to kind of open this podcast, like the Bengals have never won back-to-back divisions ever in franchise history, and they became a team in 1968, so over five decades, they've won divisions but never back-to-back. What's also crazy, too, is, I mean, you think about it, like in 2019, they were the worst team in the NFL. They were 2-14. and They were 4-11-1 Burroughs rookie year. They were 6-10 and the year before that 2-14 and team. And like Joe Mixon, Sam Hubbard, Tyler Boyd, like even Stanley Morgan, a lot of those guys have been here for a lot of those losing seasons. Like they've seen it firsthand. And, you know, to kind of go from that to, you know, carrying the crown on their head to try to run back the AFC when they open the playoffs next week. You know, I mean, it's funny because we saw the Jaguars win the AFC South yesterday after starting the year three and seven. And they had the worst record in the league in back to back seasons entering this year. You know, I think of that, and then I think of the Bengals and how it was a very similar turnaround for them. Like, what does that say about just kind of Zach Taylor and, you know, them getting Joe Burrow obviously is a big thing. But beyond just having Joe Burrow, like, what does it say that this team was in such a down place for so many years historically, and now they're looked at as one of the better teams in the NFL after, you know, that kind of a turnaround? I'm not sure it's as much that if you hit the right quarterback, you're going to have, you know, a lot of success. Um I mean, this is a quarterback-driven league, and, and Joe Burrow's obviously proven to be, um, you know, the, the the right guy for this team and this franchise. I mean, they've built up, uh, they've built it up well around him. I think the years ahead are going to be harder when he gets this bigger contract. Um, but you know, they've successfully loaded up this offense and um, hired good people and hired good coordinators. But um, and you know, Zach's done a, done a nice job of sort of um, putting it all together. But I mean, without Joe Burrow, I mean, you know, it's you know. I think that equation doesn't. It's not the same. I, I don't think Zach Taylor's. Ha- I mean, as successful as he's been, and I, I think he's a very capable coach. Uh, it was you know at the podium talking about how the you know culture and things have changed. I think Joe Burrow was sort of the key part of that equation. You know what about? I think about DJ Reader and Von Bell, who they got in free agency after Zach's first year. You know, you think about guys they drafted like Logan Wilson that same year. Uh, Chidobia Uzie, who they signed last year, like again, this is not to take away from Joe Burrow, like it's 100% majority because of him, I think. But when you kind of step away from that, like maybe defensively, all those names I mentioned, like Von Bell had the interception and in, uh, really, the, I think the greatest interception in Bengals history in the AFC Championship last year. I mentioned those other names. I mean, how remarkable is it though that like you build up that defense, you have a guy like Lou Anarumo, like. What do you kind of make of that magic that came together with those names? Well, it's complimentary to Joe Burrow. I mean, you know, I, I think if you look at the teams that have made the that have longevity of success over the last twenty five years, you know, the Patriots, Tom Brady, the Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, um, and you know, that's what the I think the Bengals aspire to be. I don't think you know, yeah, the, you know, you see what's happening in England now. Everything's kind of been a struggle since Brady's left, and even though they have a, a very good defense this year, I think that's what you have. Uh, if you didn't have Joe Burrow, you'd be absolutely more closer to five hundred team um, with an okay defense. But I, I know I don't. I don't think. I mean, as nice of a story as that defense is, it doesn't. You know, make us. There's just no way they'd be in these situations without without him. So, could you imagine a world where you know the Bengals in 2019 don't get the number one overall pick? They get the number two pick, and they get. I guess it would have probably been Tua Tagovailoa or Justin Herbert. They don't have Joe Burrow and. I mean, if they have Justin probably, Herbert, I think Justin Herbert's a really good quarterback. Justin Herbert, I, 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 I'm not saying. But does he bring the charisma and the confidence and leadership that Joe Burrow brings? I mean, I think he's great too with, the, with his arm. Does he bring the, the window nice is my whole career? Exactly. Yeah. Does I, he bring? Does Justin Herbert bring that? Does Tua Tagovailoa bring that? They're doing great. They're both going to be in the playoffs next week because the Dolphins and Chargers are in. But do they bring the Joe Burrow shystiness? I guess is what it is. Because it mostly is Joe Burrow. Uh, Justin Herbert's a really good quarterback, and I think he'd be doing very similar things with this and coaching right. staff and this team. I, I, that's the way I feel. I don't know about Tua. He's been obviously more up and down. Yeah. yeah. I saw him in college. Um, uh, you know, and obviously this year the big thing has been kind of staying on the field. But Sure. Um, As we saw in our own eyes. Uh, you know, I, I think that um, it would have been – it's an interesting debate to have, but I, I, obviously Burrow, I think – Everybody kind of feels like right now has the highest ceiling of that of that trio. Yeah, and I, I, I like the Patriots mentioned example. You kind of took the thoughts out of my mind of, yeah, look at what Brady and Belichick did, and now look at Belichick now. I mean, no offense to him, but the Patriots got eliminated today. 
They got their butts kicked in the first round last year. First year without Brady, they had the first losing record they had probably since Brady's rookie year, which I was two years old at that point, so you do the math. I mean, it makes a difference. Joe Burrow is the biggest difference, and he is the biggest and primary reason why we're sitting here right now talking about the Bengals going from being one of the laughing stocks of professional sports, not just the NFL, to being one of the most hunted teams at this point, because like you say, or the saying goes, the heaviest is the head that wears the crown. But to kind of tie this all together, like like you said, uh, Andrew, there's going to be a lot to break down this week. What is it going to look like if Lamar is back and the likelihood of that? But what are you most looking forward to just looking ahead? Because we know, like you said, the Ravens are coming. It might be Saturday or Sunday. We don't know yet because we're recording Monday. this. Or Monday because we're recording this podcast uh, 15 minutes after 6. So, um, you know, what are you, what are you really looking forward to next week? What's going to strike you the most? Um... I'm curious how much, uh, like, during the week it's going to be hard to say. It's a hard question to answer right now. Um, Because I think during the week, I I don't don't know. Um, During the week, that's, we'll see. Uh, During the game, I'm I'm very interested because, uh, you know, this is kind of more the Ravens team we're going to see, you would assume, that that beat the Bengals earlier in the year. Um, you know, they're going to have Mark Andrews and Marcus Peters and Jay, you know, they're going to, J.K. Dobbins, I don't think was in the lineup that game. Like, no. or, or he didn't play a significant role. Like you're going to have guys, you you're going to have guys in the lineup, um, that you didn't have before. So I'm curious to see how the Bengals kind of adapt to that. Um, you know, I asked Ted Karras, I was just like, you know, does their defense fundamentally change week to week? Can't like, can it? Um, and, uh, he kind of shrugged his shoulders and went, well, I guess we're going to find out together. So. I guess we're going to find out together. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just you're talking about who starts at quarterback, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's really it. Uh, I mean, I think the game will be won or lost, depending on, on, on that. I mean, I thought Lamar was done in terms of, um, you know, he hasn't played in more than a month, hasn't practiced in more than a month. It would be hard for him to come back. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Harbaugh kind of opened the door a little bit, I guess. But I, I still think it's going to be tough for him to, for, to, to do that. And then just to kind of recap the other playoff matchups, so the Chargers are the five seed. They will go to Jacksonville, again, on a, on a date and time we don't know yet. And then uh, Miami will head to Buffalo, which they only did a few weeks ago in the snow. So that's going to be an interesting rematch. And then the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes just uh, get a nice weekend off. And then uh, we'll see who they play the week after next week. But, um, you know, just to wrap up, guys, like we normally do game balls after a game like this, but... Should we just give the Bengals just a game ball after a performance like this, or do you guys have any individual game balls you want to give out? Um, let me. I'm trying to think here. Uh, it doesn't have to be a player, by the way. It could be anyone or anything. Yeah, well, so in terms of on-field performance, I'll give a game ball to Trey Hendrickson. Um, he had two sacks today. Uh, had the fourth fumble in the end zone, uh, which led to a defensive touchdown. Um, if like if the Ravens decide to sit on that, uh, where does this game end up? Because the Bengals kind of had a yeah. comfortable lead all day. Mm-hmm. Um, really, once they went up seventeen nothing, so um, you know I thought Trey kind of capped his season well. You know, still kind of playing with a banged up wrist, um, which is crazy. And then me. another game ball has to go to Joe Mixon solely for the celebration. You did too. I did too. I broke the rule. Um, I felt this, this, this game's an exception. Um, it's a division championship. What are you eating? You're eating I'm eating beer. almonds. <laughs> hey, I can eat on the podcast. Is that is that that's, not a rule? That's 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 no. That's <laughs> hey, I'm chewing while you talk. Eat, hearing people eat is disgusting, and like are like. So how, so you don't you don't eat dinner at night like with your family like you you can't stand hearing them eat. I mean, um, not, I would have called <laughs> if I was not there to hear them eat. That's the that's the analogous situation. So uh, like. Uh, yeah, we're going to keep marching on. And my, anyhow, yeah, marching on. My, um, my game ball off the field goes to Joe Mixon for the celebration because we didn't really talk about that. Um, I thought some of the fan reaction was hilarious today. Oh, gosh, yeah. Uh, booing the coin toss to start the game I thought was funny. The signs were pretty good. Uh, oh, those are Joe some, Mixon yeah. pulling the coin out of his out of his glove or wherever it was uh, to flip it I thought was pretty His cool. glove, I think. Yeah, honestly... I love you, Joe Horn, but that tops that celebration. I mean, the, the cell phone. Oh, no, it doesn't. I don't know. No, no it doesn't. But no, you got to understand, though. Like, pri- don't be prisoner of the moment. Don't no. Don't be a prisoner of the moment. I'm not being prisoner of the moment. Joe Horn was just having a good time. There was a reaction to, like, a lot of things the Bengals have gone through up to this point. Like, I don't want to use the term middle finger, but in some ways, like, Mixon just didn't care. Like, he was just like, hey, I'm going to get fined and I don't care. Horn was like, yeah, I'll get fined, but I'm sure to have some fun. Mixon was having some fun, Joe but. Joe Horn's was way cool. 
Not even a debate. He okay. Pulled a cell phone out from underneath the goalpost. Okay, we're talking about coolness. That's you can make an argument there. But we're talking about like just a gotcha moment. I mean, Mixon won that. Like he, that was a gotcha moment. I was like, I did not see that coming. Joe Burrow said he didn't even see it. We we could talk more later about how they got to that idea. But uh, Mike, any game balls or do you do you digress? I don't know. I, now that Andrew gave out two, I'm just. Like, I know. You're just. I you're so his, deflated. You're so distraught. Day. Well, we didn't talk about it. I thought we needed to kind of bring that up. Rules. The, uh, Ooh, it's it's a podcast. You give up uh, rules. You want to give a gasser or whatever the opposite of a game ball is. A no, gasser? Oh no, no. I'm, well, just, I'm, I'm so upset. Well, <laughs> I can't handle it. Well, I was just gonna say mixing for the performance, but you stole it from me. So thank you, Andrew. I appreciate it. You're but. Welcome. In all seriousness, um, I don't know if he deserves one for the performance. You're no, 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 no. I'm talking. Hey, like I said, I'm talking just for the celebration. Otherwise, okay, uh, his yeah, name wouldn't okay, come okay, up. There we go. I guess we could. I mean, Jamar Chase. He he broke a thousand yards again and oh. lost it. Lost it on one play, and then it came back again, which was kind of funny. But yeah, Jamar Chase. I mean, like Joe Burrow said, every year he's going to be playing. He's going to get a thousand yards receiving. So good for him, man. Like he got him, Justin Jefferson, a lot of great up and coming receivers in the league. Put him on that list. Stay tuned with us this week. We're going to break down all and everything you need to know for the Bengals playoff rematch with Baltimore next weekend, whether Lamar Jackson comes back, what that looks like, what the rest of either lineup looks like, plus much, much more. But once again, for myself, Andrew Gillis, and Mike Nice, I'm Muhammad Ahmad. So long, and have fun this weekend. Y'all take care.